Hello and welcome to another podcast of Be Awesome Project. My name is Marta and I'm a team member of APPDA Coimbra, which is a partner in the Project Consortium. Today, we will talk about the use of digital technologies by parents and teachers to develop social and emotional skills in autistic children. And to delve into this topic, we have invited Professor Miguel Castelo Branca as our guest. Professor Miguel is the director of CBIT, the Coimbra Institute for Biomedical Imaging and Translational Research, which is a pioneer Portuguese institute for neurosciences. Professor Miguel is a medical doctor and is also a neuroscientist. He holds a PhD degree in medicine from the Max Planck Institute, where he was also a postdoctoral fellow. He was also a lecturer in psychology at the University of Maastricht, and he is now a full professor in the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Coimbra. As the director of CBIT, he has been leading significant research on autism, particularly in the identification of biological biomarkers and conducting clinical trials, testing for alternative interventions as neurostimulation, neurofeedback and virtual reality to enhance social and emotional regulation skills for autistic children and young people. He was also recently awarded with the BL Prize in Clinical Medicine for his lifelong dedication and substantial contribution for the field of autism. Professor Miguel, it is a great pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you so much for having accepted our invitation. I would like to start by asking you why is it so important to train and help to develop emotional regulational skills in autistic children? Well, this is a very important skill that, in my opinion, these children have to learn very early on because this is very important for their socio-emotional integration. You know, emotion regulation skills are critical for interacting with other people. So you need to read other people's intentions, emotions and react accordingly. So I would say because this is a core manifestation in autism, social, emotional cognition and responses, I would say that this is a very important skill to train. Mm -hmm. So, and how do you think um, emotional regulation can impact children's communication and interaction pa patterns? Because by having these social regulation skills, they are not only more able to communicate with other people, but most importantly, to read their intentions, mm -hmm. you know. If they do not have this ability to fine tune the way they express their emotions, this will impair their communication and thereby their integration. So, and what about the use of digital technologies or as VR and gaming? Do you think, uh, what do you think uh, about the use of, of these digital technologies um, applied to, to social and functional training in autistic children? Are they effective? Well, first of all, I have a biased opinion because I do research on the use of these technologies in children and in adults. We have done actually even some interventional studies, mm -hmm. some even like clinical trials with some of these technologies, and we really see, saw positive effects, not just in specific skills like recognizing emotions in faces, but also in the mood, you know, in the anxiety and motivation. So people with autism are very prone to use technology so, and in our experience, these are really effective technologies. And there is a very important point, which is these technologies do not replace therapists, but they enhance the, the amount of hours spent per week in rehabilitation, uh, uh, in neurorehabilitation. And so neurorehabilitation has to be intensive, and these technologies uh, massively increase the amount of hours spent in training skills. Mm -hmm. And are there some any risks? Uh, parents many times are very concerned about the risks. Do you think that could be associated the risks uh, by using these this type of technologies? Well, there is, um, in general, there are no adverse effects. In fact, we, we see, as I said, that they improve their mood, anxiety and, and motivation. 
But of course, you have a legal time to be in, span, to be in front of this type of devices. Mm -hmm. You know, there are recommendations from the European Union, how many hours you can spend in front of this type of monitors, displays. Uh, of course, there is this ophthalmology concern about fa eye fatigue. But these technologies are improving to increase also visual comfort. Mm -hmm. So I would say the main, the main disadvantage is like visual discomfort or dry eye. But I would say these are minor disadvantages. I speak for myself because most of my awake hours are, are spent in front of a monitor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People sometimes concern about motion sickness, for instance, by the use of uh, virtual reality. Do you think it is a considerable... Yeah. But you can adjust the use of technologies to minimize these small side effects. Okay, okay. So, um, do you think uh, there could be a role for these technologies to be used in school, for instance, for special assistant teachers or at home by parents? Can they serve as a complement to target inf uh, interventions for, for functional training? I, I definitely think that they will be very useful for parents. So we have, the, we have the, done projects with schools show, show, this, showing these technologies. And we also have done projects with patient associations. So these technologies can clearly be brought to the field. And as I said before, if professors and teachers have the ability to use these technologies, there are more useful hours of training mm -hmm. without having the need to have a professional nearby. We know that autism needs person personalized training. And if we can personalize this training using these technologies, this can improve, this can be assistive technologies for the work of, of teachers. So I definitely think they, they, they will have a future. And we had some projects in that direction, uh, even with teachers. Can you talk a little bit about the projects do you have in the Institute? Um, yeah, so, well, we have projects that are, we have actually a project with the uh, APPDA Coimbra that actually won a prize from a bank, I think BPI, where uh, with a company, uh, with an American company that had modules to train social competences. Mm -hmm. So there was a virtual teacher. Uh, each autistic student has had his own alter ego in the virtual environment. And there were sets of lessons that they were attending virtually. So th it was like a virtual classroom. We also have some technologies, no, not just based on gaming, but also based on neurostimulation, that we did some clinical trials at home. So actually, I strongly believe that this technology can be used at school and at home, and that can be used to really uh, teach skills. Actually, we call this technology serious games, you know. Mm -hmm. We have, we, so we did projects where we had a serious game for a job interview, so for more uh, high functioning people with autism. But we also had games to teach simple skills like taking public transportation. And, and uh, so you need to train these people's socio-emotional skills. You need to train them to do more complex routines like you know, doing a small meal. And so we developed games for all, all of that. We also had the supermarket game where they basically go shopping and we measure how fast they can do it if they don't forget any item. And so we call these games with ecological validity. And this will help a lot their integration and their motivation to learn. Okay. Very in line with the, the program that is being developed by the Be Awesome project, also with virtual reality to train emotional regulation skills for, for children. Yeah. I can give you another example that is related to emotional regulation. Actually, two examples. One is the, how people regulate the interpersonal distance, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, neurotypical people normally can regulate this very well, not getting too close or too far away from somebody. People with autism have difficulties in doing that because too close generates some emotions, too far away generates a communication of some distance. And by learning emotional regulation skills, 
they can learn to regulate this interpersonal distance. And in fact, we, we have a project uh, uh, on that. And we also have a, 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 an interventional study that we will start soon, actually in collaboration with APPDA Coimbra, mm -hmm. where people learn to improve their eye contact and their reading of emotional expressions in the face by using a brain-computer interface. It's not neurofeedback, it's partly a game, partly a brain-computer interface. Okay, very interesting. And, and by parents, do you think it could be beneficial also to be used by parents at home? Yeah, so that we had in a project called STIPED, where the, the therapist is the, uh, the, the father or the mother, where they, where they put the children to do a game in an iPad, mm -hmm. and there is a, a cap that has electrodes to do very small intensity stimulation of the brain. And so we coupled a game with brain stimulation, and parents were very motivated to learn to use the, the, the tablet and, and the cap. And this was actually quite successful. And so the, for us, this was a, a proof that parents can become therapists mm -hmm. and increase the number of hours of daily therapy. Okay. And even help their children even with the learning that they do at schools yes. and improve the, their skills, uh, also learned at school. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so thank you so much, Professor Miguel. It was a very enlightening conversation for me, certainly, and for all who have listened to us. Okay, it was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to us. You can find out more about the awesome project on our social media. Don't forget to follow and stay tuned.